pandemic has had a big impact on transportation. People have shifted how and where they travel. More people are walking, cycling, and rolling. Restaurants have expanded, outdoor dining on sidewalks and streets. There's more online shopping and delivery, putting more pressure on streets and businesses. This is changing the way that cities think about streets and public space in Metro Vancouver and around the world. More people are riding bikes and scooters and need safe infrastructure to reach key destinations. Since the pandemic started, we've been seeing a lot more families, a lot more kids and teenagers riding their bikes. This time's really showing us the benefits of cycling. It's affordable, it's convenient, it's physically distanced, it's outside. It's allowing people a lot more freedom and independence, which helps their physical and mental health. Cities moved quickly with pop-up bike lanes and slow streets. By limiting vehicle use on streets, they created more space to safely get around. People are understanding that um, we have designed urban spaces largely uh, excluding you know, youth at risk, racialized communities, mostly designed for motor vehicles. Right now municipalities really are responding to our current needs around more space for people walking and biking. This time is really going to allow us to create new habits. It is creating new habits, but also maintaining those even after the pandemic is over. Benefits of more people walking and biking aren't just for those people on bikes and on foot, but also it frees up road space for people in cars, uh, overcrowded transit. It moves people around door to door a lot more efficiently. I think that road space reallocation is going to be really important. We need to keep spaces freed up for people using active transportation. Driving is returning to pre-pandemic levels, bringing more traffic congestion, making transportation less efficient and reliable for everyone, including for buses. Uh, so since the pandemic began, there's been uh, a global movement in favor of reallocating and redesigning streets. Translink buses spend over 700,000 hours stuck in congestion. This moment presents just an enormous um, opportunity to make our region move more smoothly, more reliably and faster. So we're doing a couple of different things. Bus stop balancing, which means we're removing or consolidating some bus stops to improve performance um, and free up some sidewalk space. We're also doing bus box. Uh, this is extending the curbs or, you know, constructing boarding walls that help reduce the need for buses to merge into and out of traffic and increase sidewalk space. Um, and then lastly, a thing I like to call signs and lines. So this is making regulatory changes and lane designations that prioritize our buses or separate them from other uh, traffic. The thing that's most exciting about this work is it's actually helping people get to the places that they need to go faster and more reliably. Cities bring people closer together. People need space for walking, recreation, and meeting up in appropriately physically distanced ways. Businesses need to be able to provide goods and services. Cities are transforming their streets, opening them to pedestrians and cyclists, turning parking spots into patios. We found the city of Vancouver to be responsive in terms of the needs of our business members. A um, great example right here, you know, the ability to uh, provide uh, restaurants and grocery stores with the ability to have outdoor dining spaces in a space that was traditionally used for on-street parking. I think my last count was that there were 400 uh, patios that were approved by the city literally within a couple of months. I would call it one of the silver linings of the pandemic. I think it's definitely shown the possibilities of what we can do that's been quite different than how we've been doing things for the last 10, 15, 20 years. 